Hello, Greg Lasseur for Online Tennis Instruction. Welcome to the Roger Federer Forehand Analysis Series. We can admire his excellence and are going to look at what makes Roger's forehand so great and how you can apply some of these key fundamentals to your own game. This is the advantage of slow motion feedback as we can really see what he is doing. In this first video, we are going to talk about his grip, which allows him to have a very versatile forehand. Roger uses an eastern forehand grip where his base knuckle and heel pad are on the third bevel. You can see how we find this grip by looking at the diagram and also by searching on the online tennis instruction grips video here on YouTube. What's interesting is that he appears to vary his exact hand placement. Sometimes he may be right in the middle of the third bevel. In these videos, we can see that he has a modified eastern grip where he's in the bottom part of bevel 3. It may be part of his mastery where he intentionally positions his knuckle and heel pad lower on the bevel to impart more topspin. So I'd like to quickly clarify what I mean by the middle of 3 and the bottom side of 3 and also discuss where 3.5 is. So if you look at the grip here, we've got them numbered 1, 2, 3 and 4. Those are the bevels. And this bottom line here, that is where we consider 3.5. It's the ridge between bevel 3 and bevel 4. Now Federer, we sometimes see him with his base knuckle is in the middle of 3. So you see this dotted line here. It's almost lined up his base knuckle and his heel pad on that middle part. Now in the videos that we have on display, we can see that he's hitting more towards the bottom side of 3. And what I mean by that is it's this 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 panel that's between the dotted line and the solid line. So he's on the bottom side of 3 where he's not on 3.5 on the ridge, but he's actually still got his knuckle on the flat part, but it's it's sort of between the dollar line and that and that solid line. So he's more in this position. So that's what I mean by the bottom side of three, and the middle side middle part of three would be along that dotted line. Okay, let's watch Roger execute a forehand, and then let's look at the completion and notice where the index knuckle is placed, and you can see that's on the bottom side of the third bevel. Now we're going to take a look at the placement of his heel pad right as he lines up to hit the ball. We can see how the heel pad is on that third bevel. This indicates that he is using an eastern forehand grip or grip number three. Now let's take a look at how he waits in his ready position with a neutral grip. He will then adjust his grip for topspin as he turns for his forehand. Most importantly, the advantages of this grip structure is when he returns serve. With his eastern forehand grip, he can take a very short backswing and very quickly align his strings to his target. This allows him to stand in closer and cut off his opponent's serve angles. Having a neutral grip in his ready position enables him to quickly change to his backhand grip when returning, which can be a big advantage to one-handed players. This allowed him to execute the famous Sabre return. Now let's take a look at some examples of him adjusting his grip during his unit turn. This grip also gives him a lot of different options. He can hit a lot of topspin by increasing the upward angle of his swing path. He can also flatten the shot out by extending more and reducing the upward swing angle. It's also great for disguise. Not only does his unit turn with his racket tip up allow him to take advantage of gaining speed on the drop through gravity, but it also allows him to disguise drop shots as seen here. So this concludes the first part of this three-part series on Roger Federer's forehand. In the next video, we'll talk about how Roger uses his body to generate power. Thank you for watching.